Hello friends, it's turn 34 and there's almost nothing to say, except that according to the ancient rules of the internet, that means that if a turn exists, there is pornography of it. We've only had one battle today and it was my attempt to fight off these vampires, which went not quite as I expected. I still succeeded, but not how I thought I would. As you can see, my Scrati is out front. That was not what I wanted to happen. I knew that the vampires would fly to the very back as soon as they could. So my Scratty was supposed to be scripted to be here along with his group of soldiers and then, you know, he would kill the vampire in charge, then everybody would flee and the other vampires would disintegrate. Uh, I messed that up, but um, turns out <laughs> he wasn't tough enough anyway, so it didn't really make a difference. We lost a few of our Gordi Huskals, but you know what? They killed fucking everything. And my Scratty did not even take any wounds, so that's good for him. We've also gotten pretty lucky and found two magic sites in one of our already forted provinces, which is very serendipitous since we'll be able to hang on to that for a long time, which means we've increased our gem production by three nature gems this turn and for the foreseeable future. Research and production continue apace. We're doing all of the things we're doing. We're continuing to sneak stuff around. We're continuing to site search. This guy is actually going to site search this turn so that this guy can leapfrog him here since he's here anyway. That'll save me a turn a bit longer and he doesn't need to be doing anything else. We also had a, a random event that gave us a fortress in this province, which is very lucky. That's essentially a savings of 600 gold. I wouldn't necessarily have put a fort there, but it's not a bad place to have one. And um, also, turns out, I didn't realise this, but this province, the cave province, the leaders actually have decent magic skills and could potentially get me access to earth and air more, con more widely than my uh, previous... Accessibility. A bunch of death earth casters to make items would be great. So I should actually try and get a lab in that province ASAP. And if I want a lab in a province, I should probably also put a fort there anyway. So that turned out lucky. And then the only real thing that we have to talk about is today is the turn on which both Pan and I can start scripting actions to resolve with hostilities next turn under the terms of our dissolved non-aggression pact. I, as far as I can tell, have talked him into being unsure about whether or not I was going to attack him. So this means that I have an important decision to make this turn. One, I could script these guys to attack this fortress and just fucking take it. Like, I don't think he can defend that against me, which would be a good first step and uh, would be a sensible thing to do if he is scripting to attack me, because then I will at least be getting something back out of it. On the other hand, if I don't attack him, that shows that I was telling the truth and he might be willing to reestablish some kind of NAP if he isn't also attacking me. Which means that I have created for myself a genuine, actual, organically occurring example in the world of the prisoner's dilemma, somehow. So it's genuinely a hard decision. Both of these options have their respective benefits. However, as it is currently two in the morning and I'm very tired and I forgot to do my turn earlier today, I think I am going to take the high road. I am going to refrain from attacking him this turn. If he attacks me, I'll script attacks against him and try and solve that problem that I will have made for myself. On the other hand, maybe it will pay off. Time to see whether cooperation will succeed, or at least it will, or at least we will in 12 hours or so. Once I get a look at my next turn. <laughs> anyway, that's all for me for this turn. Well, um, first off, we're going to have to really hurry through this turn because as you can see, I only have 35 minutes left to get it finished and handed in, which I have already, I mean, it is already finished and set up to automatically hand in when the time runs out, but <laughs> so I was a fool. I was, a, I was a fool who decided to trust instead of uh, not trust. I have lost almost every single province that I have available to me. What this means is that he has spent several turns sneaking troops into my territory, ready to flip them all the moment it was legal to do so. This is generally considered to be a dick move and not really appropriate under the under the parameters of an NAP. You're not supposed to script hostile actions and sneaking your troops into enemy territory in order to take their territory is definitely a hostile action. I'm going to sort of denounce him, but mostly just be like, hey, have you know? Have you noticed everybody that like he's gonna win the game if you don't do something about him? Because you know, even if he does kill me, if I can get the entire rest of the game to coalition against him, he won't win the game. The person who makes himself a standout position one generally gets taken down by positions two, three, and four ganging up on them. So I can at least have my petty revenge, possibly. It's not impossible that I'll be able to survive this and make a comeback. However, it's extremely unlikely. 
While I have some of the troops and skills I would need to retake a lot of my territory quite quickly, I don't have the gold. Because he's taken all of my territory, I no longer get any of the income for any of these territories. And you know what? Troops cost upkeep. So our entire treasury this turn went on our troops upkeep this turn. Next turn, we won't be able to pay for about a third of our troops, which means that they will start deserting, which means that we very quickly will run out of guys to fight our wars with. So as a last ditch attempt to kind of re-grab some territory, I'm going to move my main army here to kill this army if possible. I can't split this army to start retaking multiple territories here while this army is here because it will just march in and take this capital, which I absolutely need to hold. So if I march there first and just manage to actually destroy his army, then I'll be able to send other groups to go take back these territories. Meanwhile, in the south, I'm sending out two combat groups from the capital. I really wanted to send out three, but unfortunately, because of the way the communion's mechanic works, I just simply don't have enough troops to be able to cast my battlefield spells if I split them up too much. Two communion slaves grants all communion masters plus one, four communion slaves grants plus two, eight communion slaves pl grants plus three. So in order to actually efficiently be casting my rigor mortis and relief spells, I not only need my specialized casters to be casting the spells, I also need the basis of that communion, a four-person communion. I can just about get away with a two-person communion by spending a bunch of gems and <laughs> equipping this guy with a thistle staff that increases her nature magic by one, but it's it's tough. So what I have got here is a delaying tactic, which I can't remember how I talked about previously, in order to hold the center line for long enough for the rest of the spells to kill stuff. This might be overkill even for that many white centaurs, but I can't take risks at this stage now. So I've got a whole bunch of my extremely cheap shitty guys. I can fit six of them in one square, which means that these point buffs that only target one square will make six of these guys at one hit incredibly difficult to actually strike in combat, which means that suddenly you've got, what, like 12, 24, maybe even 48 very, very, very hard to hit goblins that they have to kill before they can reach my commanders at the back line. Still, this might be it. This might be the last gasp of Jotunheim. I underestimated my enemy and he has destroyed me, which is pretty much what <laughs> pretty much what's happened every single time I've played this. So one group is doing our traditional battle tactic with a new delaying tactic in the middle of the battlefield. The other group is a much smaller group. This is just our boss and two Gigias to provide a communion buff for him. They're going to be um, enabling him to cast Foul Vapors, which I have checked this. His centaurs do not have poison resistance. It's quite common to get it on centaurs because of Foul Vapors, but uh, yeah, his centaurs are terrifyingly strong. They're almost mini thugs in their own right at this point, but... You know what? Their sodium channels are not immune to inhibition. So I hope they enjoy being thoroughly toxined. I've also got this group of spellcasters moving back to the capital. With that many additional spellcasters, I might be able to arrange a third group to start moving out next turn. However, the real risk at that point will be, of course, the income. I could attempt to get some of the other players to start sending me money in as a kind of a delaying tactic against Pangaea while they while they square up against Pangaea, but you know what? Getting low-level Dominions players to team up is like herding cats, and frankly I don't have the energy at this stage. I'm going to go as far as to try and get people to coalition against him, but I'm not going to try and convince them that they should prolong my existence, not least because I will be requiring about 2,000 gold per turn to do so. Obviously, most people lose their first several games of this. It takes quite a while before you win a game, so that's going to be all from me for today getting in just under the wire. And all I have to say is oof. Well, friends, there's very little to say, except that things are looking extremely bleak. I don't need to go over all of the provinces that have changed hands. They've captured a few more of mine. I've recaptured a couple, but nowhere near enough. This group needs to return to refuel. This place is locked down and can't recruit by a small army, but these guys aren't enough to throw it off. These guys might be enough to throw off the army sieging them, so I might be able to retake that square next turn. And the gigantic army that was up here seems to have disappeared. I don't know where it went. I don't know where he's retreated it or sent it on, but he must have moved it very quickly or he stealthed it in some way. There's very little else to say beyond just the devastating morale blow that you receive in this game sometimes is, is almost crippling. It's upsetting to think that you were holding your own and then be utterly crushed by someone on a single turn. But then... Pangaea is one of, if not the strongest nations in the game. The only nations more powerful than Pangaea are the ones that are regularly banned. So it's not surprising that this would happen. I just should not have tried to make peace. I should have just accepted that when if he was going to make a war, there was going to be a war and um, positioned myself to defend against this kind of thing. But I'm not sure there's anything I could have done to stop this. Like I simply don't have the troops to defend against 
a, a mass raid that flips every territory within one turn because I just don't have the money in that case. If he, if he takes all of my territory, I have zero income, which means that I've already lost a third maybe of my, my troops this turn to desertion and that's going to be even worse next turn. In a couple turns, I will have zero troops left at all. Actually, no, I won't get any further desertions. I my The amount I'm spending is roughly equal to the amount I'm gaining, but that means I can't recruit anyone else. So I either have to fight him off with the troops I currently have or die, which means that he can bring his big doom stacky armies in and take my, my fortresses and then that'll be the end of me. This might be a slow death. There really isn't anything further to say, except simply the word oof. You know, F's in the chat. Let's let's move on. Well, friends, the struggle continues. There's very little to say today. First and most importantly, Mario contacted me so that we could um, organize attempting to form a coalition against Pangaea. He's doing most of the work on that because, frankly, I'm busy just doing survival and I don't really have much of a position left in this game. Apparently, Man is and Katis are willing to work with him, but Man says he's not going to do anything other than seize this capital first. I, I'm, I mean, <laughs> despite the fact that he said that, he's come down here with most of his army, so I suspect that Man's goal will, in fact, be to seize as much territory as he can off of Pangaea, or possibly just off of me and then off of Pangaea, so I'm... <laughs> That's going to be good for the coalition against Pangaea, but bad for me, personally. We've managed to smash open this fort, and we're now in the process of taking it. That's good because that will boost our income a little bit more. By quite a large margin, this should be a valuable province. After that's done, this army can split up and I can attempt to retake some of this territory. Down in the south, my main army is um, heading to here because this is the largest unit that he has around. If I can take that, that will be good because that's also a huge boost to my income regained and an important recruitment centre. And I can start moving these guys out to actually do more important things on the map. In addition, we're having our god step out to go retake this province, which should be fine and not trigger any kind of usage. We've also equipped this guy to be a thug, and he's going to take this province. Um, unfortunately, the suit of armor I made for my, throw, for my thug seems to have gone missing. I don't know what happened to it, but um, he should still do fine. And so if I can continue to like push my regain of territory, I might be able to maintain myself as some kind of a power in this game and not be completely wiped out. However, if I end up um, sandwiched in on all sides, you know, by Nabar over here, by Marion over here, and then by Man to the north and Pelagia to the south, I will be completely irrelevant for the rest of the game. There will be nothing left for me to do. Because by that point, they, all of those groups will have seized a lot of territory. Man will have got all, all of this territory. Nabar will have all of this territory. Marion will have all of this territory. Which means that there'll be nowhere for me to move or progress without uh, attacking one of my neighbouring allies. Or, you know, non-ally to the north, but, you know, all of whom are stronger than me. So I'm kind of in a difficult position. Right now, obviously, my priority is to seize, regain enough territory that I can push back against Pangaea, but my long-term prospects are not looking great. And that is going to be all that I have to say about this turn. Well, friends, the battle is difficult, but it's ongoing. I'm at least selling my life, not dearly exactly, but for more than nothing. There have been a bunch more province exchanges, and we have also stormed a fortress, although unfortunately, due to a dumb mistake on my part, we lost a few of our very hard to replace at this point, Gigias. It's not a particularly interesting battle, so I won't bother to show it to you, but essentially the problem that I encountered while storming this castle was that um, I forgot that the guy in charge had died taking this province, which meant that all of his troops had kind of just spilled out into the, into the terrain and therefore weren't involved in the battle. I've now reassigned those troops as best I can on the fly. But yeah, that was a, a foolish mistake. It meant I didn't have a front line occupying the enemy forces. Also, we've had a random event that has resulted in a barbarian horde attacking this province. So, as soon as we gained, <laughs> as soon as we gained access to this castle, we were then immediately sieged within it by a neutral force. Man is continuing to push across my territory very slowly but frustratingly. He's got a huge army in here. You can't see it, but it's there. Pangaea is continuing to march around and cause me problems. He's also trying to convince other players in the games group chat that he is not, in fact, the front runner and uh, at a big risk of running away with the game. In fact, trying to paint Marignan, my buddy, as uh, the biggest threat, despite the fact that Marignan is literally surrounded on three and soon to be four sides by Pangaea, which is very bad for him. 
Other than that, there's not much to say. We finally had a little bit of leeway in the budget because I lost three Gigios who have quite high upkeep, which means that we're recruiting a couple more to replace them. This army has also realised it can't harm the walls because the fortress defence was too strong, so they've left either into this or this. So I've prepped this team to move out and reclaim provinces. This team is going to move on and continue reclaiming. This is going to lift the siege on this castle, which is the biggest army he has around in the south. So if I can kill that, I can then split my army in half and retake fast provinces faster. So, you know, Project Reclaim My Territory is going pretty reasonably fast. That's really all there is to say on this one. Well, friends, we are back in the game. I'll explain what I mean in a minute, but first let's go over the messages. There's been a bunch of provinces handed back and forth. Mostly it's been re me retaking provinces that are mine by, by right. But also we've had yet another hostile seduction attempt. And I don't think I've actually explained the seduction mechanic, so I'm going to do so now. When a seduction-capable commander attempts to seduce, it's very similar to an assassination. But the target makes a morale check first, and if they fail, then rather than being assassinated, they will instantaneously flip to the attacking player's side and with an on-foot seducer be vanished into an adjacent province or with a flying seducer be taken back to that, ca that player's capital. If that morale check succeeds, then it turns into an ordinary assassination, which means that almost all of the seductions that have been happening have been not attempts to seduce, but in fact attempts to assassinate because Pangaea really only uses its seducers as assassins. Obviously against most nations, they would still have a chance to seduce that would be beneficial, provided they control an adjacent province. But almost all of my spellcasters are female, and seduction is checked against the genders of the respective individuals, unless they are happen to be wearing one of two particular amulets, one that makes men attractive to men, and one that makes women attractive to women. Except, the one that makes women attractive to women is actually bugged and does not function. So either he doesn't know that his seducers can't fly, and has been getting unlucky with adjacent provinces, or he has been equipping them with those amulets at great expense, or he's just been using them as assassins. Occam's Razor suggests he's just been trying to assassinate constantly, and I have lost a few units to those, although he's lost a few of his in the assassination attempts as well. It has only occurred to me this very turn that I could have equipped all of my Gigias with one nature gem each, so that when an assassination happened, they would immediately cast Swarm, knock themselves out, and then the vast number of insects summoned would devour the attacker. However, I didn't think of that, and this shouldn't be a problem going on from here for reasons I'm about to explain. This turn, I have done a ton of diplomacy, but essentially I got really lucky. Pangaea sent me a message basically saying, hey, one offer, take it or leave it, we'll go back to our original borders, you can have all of your territory back, and we'll to end a six-turn non-aggression pact. And I was like, well, I'm not taking or leaving that, I'm going to argue with him. Because he wouldn't be making that offer to me if killing me would not result in him dying to other players. So he clearly now has bigger problems than me to deal with, to the point where he's willing to give me back 14 provinces in exchange for me being a safe flank. Which means, oddly enough, the power lies with me. So I negotiated a bit, and I got a few of the terms changed, including uh, him granting me a few additional provinces. So, as it currently stands, I'm in position to regain all of my territory, and then take the water man and go seize his territory, because fuck that guy, he stole my territory. He was kind of a dick earlier, and um, as soon as he saw that Pan went to war with me, he marched in and took the provinces that he wanted from me in the first place that I hadn't been willing to give him. Well, guess what? They're going to be mine again soon. I hope you like eating 10 million skeletons to the face. So, I'm going to take a couple of turns to finish regaining my territory, and as you as you can see, I've begin, begun splitting a few additional groups to retake territory. Pangaea has told me how much province defence is in each of the provinces he's taken, which ones are, will be easy and which ones will be difficult to regain, and has asked for two provinces not to be taken this turn so that he can escape via them. This could, of course, be some kind of galaxy brain move on his part to get me to split my forces and, and send more of my valuable mages outside of my nice safe fortresses, but if it is... I mean, I'm dying anyway, right? So while I don't like the idea of being locked into an NAP6, I will happily break that NAP6 if a coalition gets going against him anyway. So it turns out I'm not out of this game after all, and I'm actually in position to, to kind of pull it back, and I'm even in position to start kicking off a few additional things in the coming turns. So in my research, I'm going to be trying to get to the next level of construction, and then I'm probably going to start channeling it back into some high-value targets as we ramp mage production back up again. I'm going to consolidate my forces and send off a couple of great whacking enormous communion-based armies to go fuck man's shit up. And uh, yeah, we'll see where we go from there. That's all for this turn. 
If you enjoyed this, please like, subscribe and share. I also stream regularly on Twitch and you can find me on Twitter for updates and announcements. If you want to contribute to my continued existence, then why not donate to me on Ko-fi or Patreon? All of the links are in the description. Thank you so much for watching.